the gas storage situation is good, over 80%. But storage also implies a continued flow of gas in years past. They've never relied, I don't think, on just storage. It's been storage plus a robust continued supply of other gas. There's no robust other continued supply of gas except for U.S. LNG and maybe some from Norway and Algeria. Russia is almost completely offline. So this is good news, but, but this doesn't mean the problem is over, does it? I, absolutely not. I think as you, you pointed out, inventories provide some of the relief, but not all of the relief, because you still need to have other supplies and we think you'll get other supplies from the oil market. That's part of the reason we're as bullish as we are on oil is that you're going to substitute away from European gas into things like diesel fuel, jet fuel, and combined cycle units and things of that nature that will increase the demand for oil and create the potential for oil to catch up to the rest of these other um, energy markets. And so, you know, I think the answer to your question, yeah, it's helpful, but in no way does it mean the, the situation is a, a you know, all coast clear. The other point, too, is you can concoct a story where Europe can get through this winter, but you need to also have cooperative weather, which is a big assumption. So, yeah, it's a step in the right direction, but no way does it solve the problem. Yeah, because they're still paying about 87 U.S. dollars equivalent for natural gas, and China's economy has slowed down. And, you know, the, the way the LNG market works is that once China, Sinopec or whatever, buys a load of LNG from Chenier or Tellurian in the United States or Venture Global, they, they, Europe can come in and say, hey, guess what, Sinopec? What did you pay for that? We'll pay you three times as much. Let's reroute the ship and bring it into Southampton, England, or Rotterdam or, or Hamburg, Germany, right? So... If China were to come back fully online, they're not going to sell Europe that LNG, most likely. And let's add in one more twist to it. Uh, China has its own energy problems right now. Big droughts, hydro production is down. Um, they've had to shut down industrial activities um, to deal with its own energy problems. Because you go back a year ago, um, let's remember that this energy crisis started in China with a lack of coal, um, lack of hydro, and then it moved to Europe. Then you had the war on top of that. Um, and now we're back to having energy problems in China as well. So the U.S. is the only region in the world that's relatively well positioned in terms of um, having adequate energy supplies. And, and to your point about oil, they're desperately trying to switch off gas power and then use oil to make electricity, which is like something out of 1957. I mean, it's hard to believe, but it's true. And that's why you've still got your, what is it, $130 target from Brent, which we put in U.S. On crude. WTI. Yeah, $120. I mean, so this, this little SPR sort of driven turndown in, in oil prices sounds like it's unlikely to last. Oh, we, we view it as a buying opportunity. You know, let's don't even talk about the supply uncertainty in, in places like Iraq right now. Um, as you pointed out, the, the risks are very asymmetric given how large Iraq is. But I think the bottom line is inventories are incredibly low across oil and all of the products. So you don't have any cushion there. You're going to lose those SPR barrels uh, come October. The amount of investment in this space remains incredibly low. Just look at U.S. rig counts. Look at U.S. production. You know, outside of UAE and Saudi Arabia, there is no spare capacity in the system. Um, and we start to see demand wow. rise seasonally as we go into the fourth quarter. So we think the upside, you know, our target's 130 on Brent, 125 on WTI. Well, the risk are substantially to, you know, the upside. Of that. One last point to keep in mind, historically, every time the macro markets, like the yield curve, tries to price in a recession like it did before Jackson Hole last week, um, and you don't get the recession in the U.S. like what's has probably happened, oil rallies 80 to 100 percent after that. You know, let's, let's look at what happened. The right hikes in 2006 led to an inverted rate curve in late 6, early 07. Oil traded down to 45, and, you know, history rewrote itself. We know it goes to 147 by July of 08. Because remember, it takes a while before that recession really begins to kick in. And that time, rate hikes in late 06, recession didn't occur until the middle of 08. 
um, globally. And then the other time was in 94, 95, big rate hikes, inverted yield curve, recession yeah. didn't happen immediately, and you rallied 80%. Because as we history shows, gasoline, jet fuel, shipping fuel demand, it is shockingly inelastic because people yep. got to get to where they got to get to. Jeff, outside of energy, why are we buying gold? I'm not a gold bug. There are gold bugs out there. You've met some, many, I'm sure. Why are we buying gold right now? Well, when we look at you know, gold, is just it's at the bottom end of the trading range at this point right now. Um, I think the key message here is gold has been pricing in um, the, given the Fed the benefit of the doubt that it's going to conquer this inflation problem. In fact, you look at gold relatively to break even inflation, they've been trading lockstep with one another. Um, so to take a really strong view on gold busting out of the, you know, this recent trading range, you know, getting in towards 1900 an ounce, you got to take the view that, hey, the Fed can't control this inflation. You know, that's the reason why we like to, you know, we're buying on the bottom end of, of that range, uh, but we like to sell, you know, optionality on both sides of it. Because until you become really comfortable that they're not going to get the inflation problem under control, um, you truly can't really expect gold to, you know, really bust out to the upside. You got to, you know, basically gold worked as a great inflation hedge. Um, during the 70s because you took the view that they lost control of it. Right now, um, the market's given the benefit of the doubt. You know, our base case, it doesn't have it coming out of this trading range, at least yeah. in the near term. So we're on the lower end of it.